Today we are going to create this amazing social media tooltip hover effect transition section using HTML and CSS. Yes, that was a lot of words, but it's basically a nice little section that you can include anywhere on your website to let your users know about your social media accounts. And I got the icons for every social media platform ready for you in case you need more. I'm also going to show you a few pro tips that not many people talk about, like how to modify icons and change their colors in CSS without having to modify the actual image file. How do advanced transitions work in CSS to create this bouncy effect by using the browser's developer tools like a professional developer? And very importantly, how to pass data from HTML to CSS so that our pseudo elements know what link we're hovering over and how it can use that information to apply a different text inside each tooltip and then highlight each link with a different color. We're doing that with the same CSS selector. I might also give credit to Coding Nepal, where I got the idea from initially, but in his version, he was repeating himself over and over again to hard code the color for each link individually. And I was sure there must be a more efficient way to do this, maybe using a bit of modern CSS concepts that can help me out there. I'm going to show you how I solved this and a lot more in this video. My name is Fabian and this is coding to go the channel where you learn the most relevant coding concepts in just a few minutes. To start an HTML, we create a div called socials container and add a few anchor tags where you can link your social media accounts. I will reference my Twitter and YouTube account in the href attributes. And I'm going to leave out the others since I'm not on these platforms. But you would reference your own accounts here anyways. On a side note, follow us on Twitter for more tips and tricks in web development. Once we got our links in HTML, it's time to add the respective icons. For that, I found this amazing website called simpleicons.org. Just search for the brand and click on the icon. That's it. Now the SVG code will be copied to your clipboard, which means we can just go to our link and paste it here. All right, now we do that for every link. Once we have added every icon as a child element of each link, we can continue with the CSS code. Create your style.css file, reference it properly in your HTML head, and implement a few basic styles such as the font family and the styles for the body. Now to the important part. The socials container. The socials container will receive a display of flags and a gap of 20 pixels. The SVG icons will have a height of 32 pixels and if you want to change their color you can use the fill property for that. But I'm just going to keep them black. The anchor tag which is their parent element will have a background color of white, a padding of 1 em and a border radius of 50%. This will turn it into a perfect circle. Now for me that works perfectly fine. But in case your icons have different dimensions or anything, we should specify a fixed height and width of 64 pixels, box sizing border box and flex ring of zero. This will make 100% sure that these links will stay a circle without getting squeezed or stretched by anything. Using display grid and place item center, we can center the SVG elements inside. Let's also apply a box shadow here as well. Now let's take care of the tooltip. And this is where things really get interesting. I want to show a little label that appears on hover to further explain the social media icon. It's possible that not every user knows the meaning of each icon. It will also have a nice rotating and bouncy transition effect. And I want each link to have a unique color. All of that should be possible with CSS only without having to create a new HTML element for that. So for starters, we have to add a before element to our links. This is a pseudo element that allows us to use the content property which can add text before our links. For now, let's make it say Twitter. As we can see, every link has now the text Twitter right next to it. We're going to change this exact property later. Use position absolute to place it onto another stacking context. This means that the tooltip does not interfere with any other HTML element. And let's apply a few simple styles to the pseudo element, because we want to make it look like a tooltip. Let's say background color is black for now, color white, text decoration none, and we also add a padding, border radius and box shadow. Using transform translate y, we can move the element up by 65 pixels, but we need a negative number for that. This looks already close to what I want to do with the Twitter icon, but every icon should have its own unique color, and of course a different text. This one should be YouTube, this one Instagram, and so on. But to do all of that, I want to use the same CSS code, because I don't want to copy and paste this five times and do it for every link individually, because that would be dirty CSS code. This means we don't say Twitter right here, and instead we use the attribute function. This is a function that can read HTML attributes in CSS. We pass the attribute name data-social as an argument. So we're setting the content to whatever the argument data-social is holding in HTML. So let's go to HTML and create this exact attribute. Data-social equals Twitter. And on the next link, it says 
data-social is YouTube, then Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. And now on the website, it should show this exact data attribute as the tooltip. Each link has its own tooltip even though we're using the same CSS code. Pretty cool. This data dash syntax is made specifically for pseudo elements in CSS. We always write it like this and choose the attribute name after the dash. So we always write data dash and then choose any name. I chose social, but you can name this differently if you want. Let's do something similar for the background color. Instead of hard coding it to be black, I want to use the var function and assign a variable, accent color. This variable, also known as CSS custom property, can be defined in our HTML code too. Just use the style attribute and define a dash dash accent color. Every link has a different color. The Twitter link is black. YouTube is typically red. And so on. Simply choose a fitting color for every social media link you have. And that looks great already. We should also use the hover pseudo class on the link to apply this accent color variable on the background color here too. So the link and the tooltip have the same color when hovering over it. Using the fill property, we can also change the color of the SVG icons. I want this to be white. If this doesn't work for you here, then it's possible that you changed the color of the SVGs earlier by addressing it directly. So to change them on hover, you also have to address the SVG element directly and then use the fill property. One thing I wanted to let you guys know is that we added the YouTube membership program to our channel. So if you want to support our work and the effort we put into our videos, and maybe enjoy a few benefits that come with our Coding Pro membership, then I would love to have you on board. All right, let's get back to the CSS code. I want to add a triangle to the tooltips. We can create this using an after element. This one has no content and uses absolute positioning. To create a simple triangle in CSS, we have to set the height and width to zero and use borders instead. We're going to add a border left, border right, and border top. But very importantly, no border bottom. Why? It's simple actually. A triangle is basically a square that is missing one edge. So if we have no height and width, then the borders will control everything about it. And by only having three borders, we only have three edges, which is a triangle. There is an entire website dedicated to creating simple shapes with CSS. I will link it in the description if you want to read more on this. But now we basically have our triangle and we're going to use the accent color variable again to apply the color on the website. You can use transform translate y to position the triangle slightly below the before element. But we're going to change this later anyways. All right, now to the fun part, the bouncy hover transition. We only want to show these tooltips when the user hovers over the link. So let's take a look at how the final hover effect should look like. We're basically changing three things. First, it's transform translate y, which we use to move the element up. Secondly, the opacity. First, it's fully transparent and then it has color. And lastly, the rotation. The element is slightly tilted before, and then it straightens out. So let's apply all of these things on the before element. First, we use transform translate y, and instead of negative 65 pixels, we apply negative 30. So the tooltip is a bit closer to the icon. We also use the rotate function to rotate the element by 25 degrees. Use the opacity of zero to make the element invisible. This will be the initial appearance of the element. We cannot see it on the website because we only want to see it on hover. So let's use the hover selector on the link and then style the before element. Make sure to write the selector exactly like that without a space, because we want to style the before element that is on the anchor tag. Here we use the same properties, transform translate y and set it back to negative 65 pixels. We also use the rotate function and set this back to zero. We have no rotation going on on hover and the opacity is set to one to make it fully visible. And now we end up with this effect. First, it's not visible, and when we hover over it, the tooltip is there. Now let's do the same thing for the after element, which is the triangle. So we have translate y, rotate, and opacity. Make sure that on hover, we translate the element by negative 42 pixels, because it should be slightly below the tooltip. But obviously there's still something missing. We want to animate the hover effect with a bouncy transition. Right now there is no transition at all. So let's go to the before element and add a simple transition of 200 milliseconds east, just for now. And do the same thing for the after element. We can see this will give us a normal transition, which already looks pretty great. But to make it look a bit more bouncy, I have to change the transition timing function. This requires a cubic desire function, which is a quite advanced concept. 
You see, just like in mathematics, CSS uses functions to understand the transition timing. If you use the developer tools in Firefox and inspect the before element, then you can see the CSS styles we applied to this element. Right next to the transition property, we can see this icon, which will open this window. Here we can see the transition timing function and how it actually looks like for these values that we always use. Linear, ease, ease in out, etc. It shows the speed curve of the transition over its entire timeline. In other words, when the transition should play fast and when slower to achieve the smooth effect. But we want to achieve a bouncy effect. For that, we can actually pull on these handles to manipulate the transition timing. We need to adjust the function so that it looks somewhat like this, where the speed value of the function goes a little bit over the frame. We can also see the effect demonstrated below. We can see the circle down here is now shooting over the end of the transition. The transition timing function we created here will be defined as a cubic desire. We can simply copy it here and insert it into our own CSS code. Instead of ease, we say cubic desire. And now we have our own little timing function applied and apply it on the after element here as well. And now, if we try this out in the browser, we can see that our bouncy transition will be applied on the tooltip, just like I wanted it. This was coding to go. And if you want to learn more about web development, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here. So click there to see more from us. I will see you in the next video.